I am pleased to I am pleased to introduce the second invited speaker, who is Professor Kei Ogata, geologist, teaches geological investigation and analysis of the phases and the basins at the Federico II University of Naples. Until 2019, he worked as an assistant professor at the Faculty of Science, Geology and Geochemistry of the University of Amsterdam. He studies uh, concern stratigraphic and sedimentologic, uh, sedimentological geology, and the main research area are located in Italy, Norway, Egypt and the USA. Today's lecture will talk about melanges in its complex formation and their influence on the overall mechanical behavior of the host flesh formation. Please, Professor Gata. Thank you very much, Professor Lolino. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, can you see that? Yes, it's okay. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So, good morning, everyone. Um, first of all, I would like to warmly thank all the organizers for having invited me to give this talk. And the overall aim of this presentation is uh, to synthetically illustrate the geological point of view uh, to the study of blocking matrix rock units associated to flesh types of sessions showing their variability in terms of processes and products and highlighting the features possibly influencing their geotechnical characterization. So about the contents uh, that I'm going to discuss today, uh, I will firstly introduce some historical and terminological aspect uh, linking fleece to succession and calthic rock complexes. Uh, secondly, I'll um, discuss the blocking matrix fabric of heterogeneous complex formation, highlighting some of the possible relationship between geological and geotechnical perspectives. Then I'll go through the uh, different type of melange, outlining their structural stratigraphic characteristics and showing how they're possibly influenced over our rock strength and the mechanical anisotropy. And before moving to the conclusions, I will briefly discuss how the main melange type may combine uh, and the melange generating process it may interact to combine and produce different polygenetic blocking matrix units. So uh, the intimate relationship between flesh types of sessions and their deformed and dismembered counterparts uh, was already established at the end of the 19th century by alpine geologists who introduced the term wheel flesh here for, to uh, emphasize their apparent uh, chaotic arrangement with respect to the host rock. So their undisciplined nature of bedding, uh, reaching in some cases a full developed block in mattress fabric with the occurrence of uh, discrete elements or blocks characterized by a foreign or exotic lithology compared to the matrix, not belonging to the deformed formation, so differing in terms of composition, age, metamorphism, competence, etc. And those are well identified as melange. So their sedimentary and tectonic uh, origin related to early and late orogenic processes were already postulated, and genetic terms such as olisostrom and tectonosome were, uh, were also introduced. So, but the term melange is, uh, is a, has a broadband application being just descriptive, uh, descriptive and, uh, and, uh, and non-genetic. So uh, referring to mappable rock units, uh, blocking metric rocks units characterized by internally disrupted and mixed rocks contained in a pervasively deformed matrix. And uh, one of the diagnostic criteria of differentiation is the uh, embedding of these exotic blocks with or without the occurrence of native blocks. This excludes false rocks, effusive uh, intrusive, intrusive magmatic rocks, soils, so blocking metric soils, glacial teals, weather rocks, and, and so on. So as you can see here from those two pictures, melange can, uh, with similar lithologies in this case, with fragmental limestones in argillitic matrix, can show different 
quite different outcrop conditions depending on the internal structure. So isotropic versus anisotropic and therefore their generating process. In terms of um, the, ge the geotechnical framework, such rock units are classified as heterogeneous structurally complex formations. And have been studies implementing physical and numerical modeling, mostly of natural and artificial agglomerate rocks. So for conglomerates, natural conglomerates to, to basically uh, artificial concrete. Uh, in situ testings have also been implemented. Um, and but nonetheless, such studies are challenged by the great spatial variability of those products, by the scale of deformation, scale of observations, uh, and uh, and also the difficulties in actually getting intact samples. Another striking characteristic of of Melange is in fact their apparent uh, scale independent block in matrix fabric, and their spatial and the, and also the spatial arrangement of the internal elements which is basically fractal and is recognizable from the microscopic to basically the cartographic scale. So in uh, uh, the geotechnical and engineering implication of the block matrix uh, arrangement at map scale is uh, nicely summarized here in this figure from Wakabayashi and Medley 2015. And here you can see some of those uh, parameters used to, um, to link geological and the geotechnical uh, perspectives. So the block proportions that possibly influence the rock strength, the, the, uh, as the same as uh, the block lithology inventory, and uh, the shape and orientation of the blocks influencing strength and anisotropy, the foliation orientation of the matrix, and there is the, their internal anatomy of those, of, those, of those bodies, as well as the orientation nature of the bounding uh, contacts uh, with the host formation. One parameter that we add and we discuss here is the uh, adhesion in friction at the blocks boundaries within the matrix, so the block matrix mechanical coupling. So the structural heterogeneity and isotropy imparted from the different blocking matrix configuration that we are going to see will impart significant um, issues on the slope stabilities, for example, by mainly controlling the uh, shape orientation of the rupture or detachment surfaces. And this is mainly controlled by the orientation of the blocking matrix anisotropy with respect to direction and inclination of the local slopes. So from a geological point of view, uh, heterogeneous, uh, heterogeneous structurally complex formation with blocking matrix fabric and in flesh type rocks can be subdivided into broken formation and melange based on the magnitude of stratal disruption and lithological mixing and therefore the inclusion of exotic uh, lithologies. And this is in a virtual continuity with host rock. So broken formation and melange are thus closely associated and often occur together. So there are three main types of melange associ and associated product that can be identified on the basis of the generation mechanism. All of them can occur together at the from the very early stages of mountain building processes and are closely related to orogenic stages of flesh and mollusk accumulation, accretion and deformation. So we have sedimentary melange, also known as olistostroms, originated from large scale basin wide superficial and gravitational mass wasting processes or so sedimentary processes and are namely um, fossil submarine landslides. Then we have te tectonic melange, uh, also known as tectonosomes, are created by the general, uh, generalized tectonic shearing in a regional fault zone, so truss, strike, slip, and detachment zones, and in part conform to the classical fault zone architectural elements. Then we have a third uh, type, which is the diapiric, diapiric melange, that are due to remobilization of weak material in the subsurface by density disequilibria, so fluid or and or composition driven, and their active intrusion of the removed material. So even if there is uh, an apparent morphological convergence of the blocking matrix products between those three uh, generating processes, such units show remarkably different arrangement of the structural anisotropy um, uh, related to their, to their generating process. And I'll try to show you some of those aspects in the following slides. So starting from sedimentary melange, as we said, there are basically large scale fossil submarine landslides um, deposits bearing extra formational lithologies. 
and are uh, conformably uh, contained embedded within flash deposits. Um, so therefore, those units can be studied implementing stratigraphic approach. And uh, nonetheless, they are, have a lot, large lateral variability. There is a common composite stratigraphic architecture that is repetitive, systematic, and, as, and that can be seen in, uh, in uh, several examples. Their composition is highly heterogeneous. That largely depends on the physiography of the depositional setting. For example, the wedge top from the 4D. Here we have several, some example coming from the, the wedge top into the basically the four deep, four deep deposits. And uh, they show quite a high variability. There are three main types of mass transport phases comprising, uh, comprising those, 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 those complexes and related generating processes. And they can be framed again within a conceptual continuum that goes from slumps to debris flows um, based on, uh, in this case, on the amount of matrix. And they conform also uh, with, the, with the framework of broken formation. So from basically uh, the form and succession with no inclusion of exotic blocks from slumps then to the actual melange that are represented by the debris flow type of deposits. So we have slumps where we have the, the formation is accommodated by, by shear planes, shear zone, and, uh, and uh, as an end member, and debris flows at the other end member, fully uh, uh, blocking matrix fabric represented by the hyper concentrated subset, uh, suspension of, uh, of material, and the, and the um, deformation is accommodated by flowing. So those three, already these three type of phases are characterized by intrinsic structural anisotropy provided by uh, uh, intrinsic structures and intrinsic me mechanical, mechanical discontinuities and different block proportions. So the combination of these mass transport phases define possible structural stratigraphic architecture of sedimentary melange. And in this figure, I represented some, some case studies. There are, as I said, there are a multitude of variables influencing the architecture and therefore a high variability of the resultant sedimentary melange. And this is to emphasize that case by case approach is preferred. Um, and uh, uh, as you can see here, anyway, we, we can um, see this composite architecture defined by, by, by different mass transport phases, basically juxtaposed, uh, juxtaposed together providing providing therefore a composite a composite type of unit with intrinsic uh, different characteristics in terms of uh, uh, of um, uh, structural anisotropy and, and overall rock strength here are some examples of sedimentary melange characterized by the occurrence of outside slide blocks i mean uh, in uh, with dimension reaching and actually surpassing uh, a kilometer uh, um, and also here are the main three types of lithologies represented from siliciclastic to carbonates and ophiolitic, also representing different state, different competences. And such blocks can be usually tabular or bedded, like in the case of carbonates or siliciclastic, preserving their original stratigraphy and showing their different, uh, different degrees of deformation from plastic folding to brisciation and fracturing, depending on their lithification state during the involvement in the mass transport process and redeposition. Therefore, they are characterized by intrinsic structural anisotropy. Again, so this block, the block themselves, given their dimension, they, are, they can be treated as, uh, as, uh, as a discrete unit within the sedimentary melange. Uh, and so they, um, their bedded versus massive appearance possibly influence the overall technical behavior of the unit. So the blocking metric feature of, let's say, geological geotechnical interest in sedimentary melange can be therefore the, the differential welding of the block uh, and matrix, depending again on the, on the lithology, we can have completely welded matrix and blocks or, or, uh, or um, blocks are basically standing out because they're much more competent with respect to the matrix. So the lithification and to uh, and consolidation at the time of the formation is important for providing this on welding or unwelding of blocking matrix contacts. Another important feature is provided by the flow related, my flow related matrix anisotropy of, of, of the matrix itself. Uh, also with welded mechanical discontinuities represented by uh, uh, soft sediment uh, shear zones. 
Then moving to the tectonic counterparts and then in the blocky matrix fabric in tectonic melange is mostly due to simple to pure shear deformation achieved during regional uh, in within regional fault zone and decal models. So the structural, there is a structural architecture again that is uh, uh, coherent with associated local tectonic regime and is symmetrically arranged as, uh, in, uh, as defined for, for uh, fault zone architectures with the marginal broken formation in the damaged zones and melange, uh, melange material in the core. So the, uh, the structural disruptions process is particularly efficient in the blocking met uh, and in, in broken formation and the blocking met in the resultant blocking matrix fabric is therefore fully developed and sometimes most of the tectonic melange identified in, in orogenic belt actually consists of broken formation. So without the actual occurrence of, uh, of and mixing of, uh, of exotic material. Tectonic shear processes uh, in generating tectonic melange may operate, may act from shallow to deep crustal conditions. Therefore, they can involve materials characterized by different uh, lithification state. The subtle disruption of uh, these bedded sequences, namely flesh type deposits, so it goes from ductile, symmetrical to asymmetrical boudinage, to fragmentation in by riddle shearing and microfolding, and eventual juxtaposition uh, of uh, the isolated elements and therefore uh, uh, lithological mixing. And also synchromatic mineralization, which is pretty common. So veining and, and, and preferential mineralization along, along fault zones. So in particular, the mechanical rheological contrast between um, the developing block and matrix and the overall boreal condition define the overall uh, rock strength and structural anisotropy of the tectonic melange. So for instance, we have disjunctive internal discontinuity like well-developed scaly fabric, depending again from all the, uh, on the maturity of the deformation and the, and the, the burial condition. Uh, all of them are characterized by the strong shear-related matrix anisotropy, even like foliation cleavage, uh, block class elongations, as, as represented in here. Um, they have high mechanical contrast at the bodies, Margin, so at the, uh, at the contact with the host rock, and also uh, in, in within the melange at the block boundaries. And also we have the sync kinematic mineralization and structural dysanalysis, basically changing the, the, um, the geotechnical characteristic of, the, of, this, uh, of this melange as long as the, the formation progresses. A third type uh, we are going to like to discuss today is are the diapiric melange. Also, diapiric melange show a structural architecture of the blocky matrix fabric characterized by a complex matrix anisotropy uh, due to fluidal matrix fabric, so intrafolial folding that provides quite the complexity in within the structural anisotropy of the matrix. And another striking characteristic is the, uh, the high angle marginal contacts with respect to the host formation. Also here we have an asymmetric zonation that is apparent within, uh, uh, within this diapiric melange uh, and goes from the margin with broken formations to, to uh, melange material at the core. And this is due to differential velocity, velocity gradient of the intrusive material, so faster and coherent in, at the core and slower at, uh, at, at the margins. So there's uh, the diapirism, diapirism, diapiric phenomenon are due to subsurface density disequilibria, as uh, as I as I mentioned, and usually achieved in uh, in accretionary settings, and preserved within uh, far traveled alloctonous naps, like the Apenninic Ligurian nap, for example, due to gravitational tectonic driven over and under consolidation gradients, the occurrence of excess pore pressure compartment driven by the genesis, compaction, and shallow metamorphism, and moreover, the, the progressive involvement of water-saturated sediments and other mechanically weak lithologies as evaporites or serpentinites may favor such condition and the development of diapiric bodies and associated intrusive, intrusive structures that are, can be, be developed at the mesoscale, so the outgroup scale, down to the, uh, the map scale. So in terms of influence on geologic, geotechnical parameters, diapiric melanges 
show articulated boundaries and are characterized by internal structural partitioning with higher anisotropy at the margin and relatively isotropic, isotrop more isotropic core. The internal mechanical discontinuities appear generally welded, while the blocking matrix contours varies uh, from lower values at transitional zones to higher ones in the cores, where also the, the, the blocks, the, the carrier blocks are, are, are larger. So to summarize and compare those different types of melange, we use some simple geometrical parameters like the, the aspect ratio and the elongation of the blocks. So sedimentary melange uh, showed the lowest value with mild block uh, anisotropy and generally parallel to the bedding of the host formation. For tectonic melange, we show, they show higher values of and a strong block, in, block anisotropy and usually with a high angle with respect to the host bedding, high to low angle. Diaperic bodies show instead a low to high block uh, anisotropy in the core and marginal zone with high, largest blocks in the, in the core zone and usually high angle relationship with the host rock. So here is a summarization taken from, from, from just, not just from the Northern Apennines, but also uh, other, other um, uh, orogenic black belts like the, the US ones and other circum Mediterranean uh, chains. So um, the different, these, these different uh, structural stratigraphic attitudes shown by these three different types of melange um, can be, uh, should be taken into account when, uh, uh, when planning, for example, ge ge uh, geoengineering initiative, like for example, mitigating the excavation risk and optimizing tunnel designs as, as illustrated in these, in these cartoons here because of their uh, basically the internal uh, structural anisotropy and especially their uh, relationship, the, the completely different relationship with the, with the host rock. And the same applies to slope stability analysis that um, also considering the intrinsic differences that we have between broken formation and melange that usually occur together. So, and their implication in terms of structural anisotropy and rock strength. So, with respect to the, um, the, the orientation of the, this structural anisotropy provided by the, the different sedimented, tectonic, and diapic broken formation and melange, and the orientation and inclination of the local slope. So, here is a, a case study, a showcase example of slope instability related to the anisotropic blocking matrix fabric. Uh, is here uh, you have an example of the sedimentary melange or the, the Rhodes mega bed in the Anko in the Ankovo quarry in Slovenia. It's an, uh, and it's an open quarry for uh, um, for calcium carbonates for cement for cement production. And here uh, uh, we observe um, collapses of the quarry ledges due to the uh, block shape elongation. So wedges collapse wedges basically driven by the shape of these bedded blocks. It's the sliding the sliding surface. Um, conforming to the, the contact of the blocks and the matrix, and uh, basically yeah, sliding on the on the sides of those folded blocks. Other other causes that favor such slope failures are the high mechanical contrast between the block and matrix. In this case, we have well liquefied platform carbonates were sedimented in in a semi classic 4D. There we have the differential uh, we have differential micro cars processes acting in the block and the matrix because of the, their, different, um, uh, their different texture. So we have basically a um, creation of voids and, and cavities at the base of the blocks or within the, the matrix. There are, um, we have a more dissolvable matrix and therefore the creation of these weak zones were prone to fail. And the occurrence of clay or smectite rich um, basal shear zone at the base of slide blocks that are prone to be uh, reactivated, for example. So before moving toward the conclusions, I would like to spend a few words to, uh, um, on the occurrence of polygenic melange. In fact, uh, it's uh, due to the very dynamic environment of formation that the three main generating process may interact, uh, mutually reworking each other and recycling the respective products. And therefore they converge toward an amalgamation and homogenization of the different blocking metrics characteristics. 
So this is, is exemplified by the cycle uh, of the sedimentary melange, transport and placement at the deformation front of an accretionary prism, its involvement in the shallow um, thrust tectonic and deep thrust tectonic, and fi its final destination as a diapiric body. So in particular, such reworking overprints the sediment, overprinting sedimentary to tectonic melange at shallow crustal conditions. So without the someone in the in, uh, any any metamorphism is sufficient to deeply change some basic features of the blocking matrix fabric, like the uh, the block matrix welding, the and the anisotropy, along with the deformation. So from shallow from shallow conditions to basically deep conditions um, down to the shallow shallow seismogenic zone but still in uh, in uh, um, uh, shallow and low metamorphic conditions so to conclude and just a few take-home messages uh, heterogeneous structural complex formation are blocking matrix units those blocking matrix units can be differentiated in broken broken formation and melange based on uh, uh, mixing and, uh, and structural disruption, and they can be differentiated in sedimentary, tectonic, diapiric, or polygenetic ones. So they have different structural anatomies and relationship with the host rock, uh, in this case, flesh type formation, and this may impact the geotechnical behavior. So keeping in mind those simple scheme and the case a by case geological approach to this the study of this type of blocking matrix unit may be therefore beneficial in providing some more predictability to geotechnical characterization of heterogeneous complex formation in associated uh, flesh type successions. So this is it. Thank you very much. Thanks for your great contribution, Professor Ogata. Thanks a lot. Now, the geological Professore Lollino dovrebbe, ecco, pass dovrebbe, con... pass dovrebbe passare sull'altra riunione. Ah sì, allora. Sì. Questa viene terminata e passa sulla successiva. Sono... 25.